Hi, it's Mark Coleman from Paul's Photo and the Creative Photo Academy and the lab at Paul's Photo. It's day three of our Be Creative series. And I thought I wanted to show you tonight, I haven't done a photo edit in a while. So I'm going to show you photo editing tonight. So what I've done is I've taken the memory card. It's a compact flash express card, plugged it into a card reader, goes into the USB port on my computer. I import that to a folder and then using Adobe Photoshop Bridge, Bridge is the editing function in Photoshop. And so I use it to see all the pictures. I've thrown away the bad ones. So all I have left is the one good one from tonight. Now I'm going to double click on this image. And from Bridge, it's going to open in Photoshop. Actually, it's going to go first to Camera Raw. So in Camera Raw, I see the histogram to check the exposure. I see the white balance. So I'm going to add a little bit of brightness to this. I'm going to take the highlights and bring them down just a titch, right? Good. And because I'm going to make this image a color image, I'm going to add a little bit of vibrance and a little bit of color saturation to make the red carrot redder and the green of the plate a little stronger. So remember, the challenge here for my family was to make a good picture out of my son's leftovers from dinner plate. So there it is. I put it on the tablecloth, got it all framed in. Now I'm going to open the image and I come to Adobe Photoshop. So here this is a color image. So one of the things I don't like is this little bit of light in the up hand, up, upper corner. So the easiest thing to do is to crop that. Now I want to leave this photo in the original format, the original ratio that I shot. So I hit the, the crop tool and then up here at the top I have the cropping ratio. So I like the 2 by 3 ratio. So I'm going to drag the crop down just a titch here and now I'm going to bring it in from the side there and you see how I took out, just eliminated from the area, that little bit of light up in the corner. And to me that makes a giant difference to the picture because it focuses the eye down here on the plate. Now there's still a little bit of brightness up there so I'm going to grab the spot healing brush tool which looks like a band-aid. And then I'm going to run that right along the edge and we'll see how that works. If that cleans up, yes, it cleaned up that little bit of brightness that was left up there on the top. And I overall like this. I'm going to use the spot healing brush here and that little bit of, of food that's right next to the edge, right? And I like this. I love the image. I love how sharp it is. One of the things you'll learn when you graduate to a full frame mirrorless or digital SLR camera with the pro quality lenses, how really sharp this is. So I'm going to use the magnifying glass and I'm going to show you. I'm going to come right in tight here. I think I'm going to move over here to the knife. Look at the edge of the knife. I mean, talk about sharpness, right? You can see the serrations here on the edge of the knife. How cool is that? So now I hit the Alt key or the Option key and I go back out to full size. Or I could have hit Command-0 in Photoshop to do that as well. Now in the color image, I'm pretty happy with the overall color of this image. So you can see how much time do I really spend in Photoshop? Not a lot. I'm just seasoning and fine tuning the image just a wee bit. So I'm pretty happy with this in color. So I'm going to hit File, Save As. And you can see that I've already changed the name on it to the date, 0603, today's date, which is how I'm filing the Be Creative series pictures. Now I'm going to add the letter A to the front of this and save it as a JPEG file. So this is the file that I'm then going to post. I'm going to resize this photo and I'm going to post it on the internet. So now I'm going to go to image, image size, and I'm going to change the size from 25 inches, which is the native out of my Nikon Z7, and to 8 inches, which is the right size for me to post on Facebook or Instagram. And then I'm going to file Save As, and I'm going to put this in the folder desktop for the B Creative Series, and I'm going to change the file number because in this file I keep track of the pictures by the day number. So this is picture number or day number 83's picture. I'm going to save that. Boom. So now I have three copies of this photo. I have the original RAW file. I have the JPEG file that was edited that has the A moniker at the front of it, that that's my final copy 
if I'm going to ever print or go back to that, that's the one I'm going to go back to. And then I have the smaller version that's in a separate folder because I'm keeping all the Be Creative together in one place that has a different name so that I, and I named it differently so that I can upload it easily and, and things like that. Generally, I wouldn't rename it in a, in a different way, but this is a unique situation for me. So I'm going to now close this file because I've saved it and I'm almost, I'll, I'll upload that to Photoshop and I mean to Lightroom and, and to um, uh, Facebook in a little bit. But you can see now here I have the color version, the JPEG. I'm going to open that. And now I want to make this image black and white. And there's a lot of different ways to make it black and white. The easiest way would go to be to image, to mode, grayscale, and Photoshop just converts it to a black and white. And if you shoot black and white in your camera or you use Photoshop and convert to black and white, this is what you get. And I find the image to be too muddy, too gray, is not what I want to share. So I'm going to hit Command Z and undo that. I could also do image adjustments, black and white, and use the Photoshop tool here to make it a black and white, adjusting the colors and such. And that's an okay way to do it. You also could have done this in the raw conversion in Camera Raw or Lightroom. I don't like either of those ways. So I use a cheat. And this cheat is software called Nick Software. It's, it's by a company called DxO. It's an awesome piece of software. I've been using Nick Software for about 20 years. And they have, their, they have a piece of software, and it's about $60 for a suite of seven pieces of software. But to convert to black and white, I use Nick Silver Effects. Now, other companies have similar type programs. Oh, I don't want to update. Oh my gosh, I didn't know this was coming. I'm going to update later. I can do that later. Thank you. Other companies have black and white conversion software like Topaz, Luminar. There's a lot of them out there. I personally prefer the Nick software. And one of the things I love about Nick software is by enabling, I can see a bunch of presets. So they have a bunch of pre-adjustments that they have built in. So they have recipes that I could copy if I wanted to. I don't like to use those. I like to do it on my own. So I'll go back to natural. I'm going to hide the, those presets. And now the first step I'm going to make is I'm going to add a black and white filter, which silly, but a black and white filter is a color filter. So now I've got no filter, red filter, orange filter, yellow filter, green filter, blue filter. And you see how that's changing the image? I personally like the no filter one better. So I'm getting the natural tones from the scene as I shot it with the green plate being kind of a dark gray, the potatoes being white, the knife. So now in black and white, what I can do using the Nick software, I can use what's called a control point. And one of the things that I learned in black and white photography, it's very important to control the eye. And what am I doing here? I'm going up to the corner and I'm dialing in a little bit of darkness. So I'm going to do the same thing up here to keep it in balance, add it, taking about a 5% darkness, and I'm going to copy that by hitting the option button and dragging my control point here onto the plate. I'm going to do the same thing here to darken the corners. And in the early days of Photoshop, they used to have a tool called the Ansel Adams tool, and that's exactly what it did. It darkened the corners. I'm going to take that same effect and I'm going to bring it down here to the bottom. And not a lot. Some people will say, Mark, how come you don't use a vignette? So a vignette is a tool, and I find it to be way, way, way heavy-handed. So look what we've just done here. By darkening the corners a little bit, you focus your eye to the middle of the picture. Now, why doesn't this work in color? I really don't know. But I like to do it more in black and white. So now I'm going to come in here to the bread left over on the plate. I'm going to add a little bit of structure using my control point. I'm going to do that over here to the mashed potatoes and I'm going to actually brighten the mashed potatoes just a titch, about 7% brightness on the mashed potatoes. Why do I want to brighten the mashed potatoes? Because I want them to come up in value near the chrome in the spoon, I mean in the fork and the knife. I'm um, just to balance the eye and move the eye a little bit. 
I also want to come in here with the control point. Now, you can do this same effect in, in, um, in Photoshop by using the dodge and burn tool. I just find in Nick it's a little bit easier to get the control. So what I've done is I've added a little bit of brightness and adjusting the size of my control point here on the carrot that was left on the plate because it was too close in tone for me to the plate. It didn't stand out. So now look what's happened. See how your eye has a direction and a movement here? I really love this. Um, I'm really happy. I think this is gonna make a beautiful, nice big print. Um, I just, I, I'm pretty excited about this. So I wanna try another control point up here because I feel, feel that it's too bright right there. I'm gonna darken. Yeah, look what that, ha uh, that's too much right about there, take a little light away. I find this part to be a little bit too dark. I'm gonna take away a little bit of the darkness from the plate here. That's about right. So now that has a nice feel. You see how you have some movement here created. And, and when I set this, took this, saw the shot, I mean, the food is exactly how my son left it. The only thing I did is I adjusted the, the knife and the fork so that they wouldn't get a horrible glare from the light that I use. And I think that's a pretty good picture. What do you guys think? So now I'm saving it. And so when you save in Nick software, Nick software is very ingenious because it comes in as a layer. So if you can see here in Photoshop, and this is one great advantage that Photoshop has over Lightroom, is it saves the NIC as a layer. So you can see with and without the NIC software there. Perfect. So if I want, at this point, I can file Save As, and it's going to ask me to save it as a PSD file, which is a Photoshop file, and that preserves the layers. I don't like to do that. It takes up a little bit of space for me. And what I want to be able to do is I'm going to go to Layers, Flatten the Image, which means I'm going to take that layer the black and white layer and the color layer and merge them together so that now becomes one. So what I've just done is I can't undo the black and whiting of this image. So it's locked in at black and white. File, save as, and because it's a black and white, I'm gonna add at the end of the file BW for black and white. Boom. Now, you think that's silly because I can tell by looking at the image that it's black and white, that's true. But when I'm looking at a list of files and I see three files of the same image, ah, there's the black and white one. That's the one that I want to upload to Facebook. That's the one that I want to take off and make a print to. So this is a beautiful image. If I go to image, image size, right out of the Nikon Z7, it's a 17 by 26 size print. I can tell you that I have printed these files up to 40 by 60 and they are glorious. They're beautiful. I invite you to take the plunge and try a full frame digital SLR or mirrorless camera. I invite you to edit your photos because taking a great photo is half the battle. Well, realistically, if I think like, if I think like um, Yogi Berra, thinking about the creativity to build a photo is the first half. Taking the great photo is the second half and editing the photo in the computer and printing it and sharing it is the third half. I know, how do you come up with three halves? But that's Yogi Berra for you. So this is my final image. I'm happy with it. And that's the one I'm going to post on Facebook and Instagram tonight. I hope you like the video. I hope you like the photo. Mark Komen from Paul's Photo, the Creative Photo Academy and the lab at Paul's Photo sharing pictures. And you know what? I'm starting to get a little hungry. Maybe I'll go see if there's some leftovers. See you real soon.